Hey, I'm Brian. Hi, I'm Robert. And we are Two Bears, Bears and, and a Bus. bus. Uh, as many of you know, you've been following our channel. We've been working on this bus since about May 10th, 2020. Uh, it was our goal to finish it midsummer and actually go traveling across Canada. Uh, unfortunately, these builds take a bit longer than you th think. Um, and in this case, we actually had to rebuild the floor of the enti entire shell. Uh, so that slowed us down by about three weeks. Okay. Without further ado, let's take a quick tour of Edgar. Uh, I guess our inspiration for the bus generally was sort of gentleman's club, boudoir, uh, Victorian, and maybe a slightly steampunk. Uh, that's kind of a uh, style that we definitely appreciate and like. Uh, so that's where we went with this. We did all the wood staining ourselves. We built everything ourselves. Uh, for example, the kitchen here, this was an old Ikea desk butcher block that I chopped up and reconfigured. Uh, we built all the cabinetry. All these cabinets, we sewed all the curtains, did pretty much everything you see in here uh, from scratch with the exception of a few items. Uh, for many of these schoolie owners, one of the important things to have is this. Rear view camera. This thing is a lifesaver. Uh, it basically just acts like your rear view mirror and uh, we just have it on all the time when we're driving and it's awesome. We also have a curtain here that we draw at night for privacy and it follows this track and goes all the way around. Uh, so first things first, let's talk about our kitchen. We have an L-shaped kitchen, which is great. This gives us a lot of counter space. Uh, at some point we want to put a little curiosity cabinet here or something for spices and just maybe a bit of quirky things. Uh, we have our upper cabinets, which have all of our dishes and whatnot. Um, we put latches on all the drawers here so that when we're in transit, we're not having stuff flying around. This is actually our 12 volt fridge. It just rolls right out. We've got two compartments, so there's a freezer compartment here, um, and then the refrigerator compartment is a little bit further in. You just roll it out, grab what you want. Uh, it's 12 volt, and we're running completely off the sun. We have been off grid with this guy now for uh, two and a half months now while we've been working on it, and he hasn't been plugged in. Uh, one of the things that we got was this really great, it's an outdoor camp oven uh, and stovetop combo, meant to be used outside, but we did a bunch of CO, uh, CO tests on it. Um, as well as heat tests, and we haven't had any issues with it. We have this great skylight here, so we can just open up that when we're cooking. We also open this and put a fan in there if we need to, but we haven't had any issues with it as of yet. Um, and we've been running the oven. I cooked cinnamon buns in the other night, and it worked great. Uh, but what you do is you lift the counter up, it clips in up here, pull that up, and bam, you can do all your cooking. Uh, these burners are great, they're a good size. Uh, overall, this is a great unit. I'm really happy with it. It's about 300 bucks-ish used, um, but the person hadn't even used it. So, um, And the other thing that we did is we built a heat shield inside this cabinet. And if you watch some of our previous videos, I explained what I did there. Uh, but that's just sort of a heat diffuser so that it doesn't get too hot. That being said, this oven actually doesn't get very hot on the sides. There's a lot of space in the back here. Uh, of course, we want this as workspace with uh, you know, for chopping up vegetables or whatever when you're cooking, pre-cooking, so that you have the space there. Um, we also did the same thing with the in-sink uh, cover. So this actually gives us quite a bit of usable space. Um, one of the things that I'm always excited about, and it's small, but it's big, water. It's just really cool to have running water in your schoolie. Um, I'll get into how the water system works, maybe not in this video, but in a separate video, and what we did, and how a lot of our plumbing so since we posted our Instagram post of the actual finished photos of the bus, we had a lot of questions of, where does the ladder go? Wonder what the ladder's for. Why do you have a ladder in the middle of the bus? Um, we actually like the ladder when we're parked. It's kind of cool. You can rest your feet on it when you're sitting on the couch. Um, and the cat loves it. She just climbs up and can sit in the dome and look out the window. Right now we have a mesh uh, reflector in the dome just to keep the sun from shining in. Uh, particularly, we don't want the leather couch to get super faded, so we have that in there for now. Uh, but anyways, without further ado, let's go up on the roof so you can see what it looks like. Oh, hi, Robert. Oh, hi. How's the view? Beautiful Okanagan view, except ah. for the smoke. Awesome. Yeah, so here's a little panel of the rooftop deck. We essentially have about, I don't know, almost eight feet, maybe seven and a half by about 11 up to the edge of that window. So it's quite a bit of floor space. Uh, we have plans to put some railings that pop up on all the sides and the back here. Um, of course, this is our skylight that we converted to a hatch and it works great. It has one of those gas lifts on it to hold it up and we haven't had no issues with it. 
Um, and then this is our solar panel array on the top here. So we have 480 watts of solar um, going into a 40 amp charge controller, and that is charging 170 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So uh, that's been a good setup for us. Here's the view. It's gorgeous. So that's it for our quick roof tour. It's kind of basic right now, but we have big plans for it next year. Like I said, with the railings, we're gonna have shade structure on top of that and some nice lighting and stuff. So it'll be a nice chill hangout space. Uh, so like I said, when we're parked, we actually like to leave the ladder here. One, it's easy to access the roof. That way you're not always schlepping the ladder back and forth. Um, and two, it's functional and it looks kind of cool in here. Uh, gives it a bit of a yacht feel, like you've got to climb to the top of the, the yacht and see what the sun and the waves look like. Uh, but of course, we have to stow this when we're driving. Um, what we've done is use uh, flush mount brackets here for the clips into. And I've also got a flush mount bracket right here. Um, and we actually store it in the back here in the bedroom. So we just unclip it. And just like that, it's out of the way, safe for travel without any worry about it um, crashing around or injuring our cats when we're traveling. Um, okay. So main space, we actually called this the great room when we were building it. Uh, we wanted something kind of old and old timey, but just really homey feeling. Um, this table was actually one of the things we didn't make. It is an old sewing table. So this actually opens up. We have to finish it, but you can use this for extra table space if you want. We're gonna um, fill this eventually. We've just ran out of time. Um, we also put a drawer in it. It's always good to have a catch-all drawer, no matter where you are, whether you're at home, in a big house, in a tiny house. There's just things you want to put in a drawer. Pens, pencils, erasers, chargers, what have you. Um, we also got these ottomans. Uh, eventually we're going to reupholster them the same way we did the couch for consistency with stuff. But these are great because you can actually store stuff in them and you can slide them around and use them uh, to rest your legs on or whatever when you're sitting on the couch. Uh, one of the cool things about this is this couch. Uh, this couch was custom made. We, we made this entire couch from scratch. It holds our water tank, uh, it has our water pump, our water filter, propane for the hot water heater. Everything's inside there. Like I said, I'll get into that in a different video and explain how we did this all. Uh, but we actually made this couch from scratch. We used pieces of an old piano here and here. This is wood from the top of the old piano. Uh, we bought the leather hide, we cut it up, we did the tufting. We made these cushions. Everything you see here was made with these hands um, and the hands holding the camera. Uh, and we're very proud of it. It's very comfortable and it, it completely nailed the look that we were going for. Uh, I have a sketch, I'll put it in the video here. And that's what I was using sort of as my initial idea, reference, whatever you want to call it, inspiration for the actual just general look and feel of the bus. Uh, so this is our great room, it's super comfortable. Uh, sadly, we have two sconces that are gonna go here and here. Um, we wanna get them to be just right. So we haven't found what we're looking for. Uh, there's been lots of things that we've fiddled with and played with, they're just not quite right. So when we see them, we're gonna buy them and we'll install them. Wanted to have it done for the video purpose. Can't win it all, uh, but anyways, there's a switch here for that as well. And that'll light up those. Um, we have switches everywhere for all the lights. So speaking of switches, we actually had to make all these custom switch panel covers, whatever you want to call them, uh, because we did two by two walls with insulation between the outer shell. So it's essentially like a fake wall between the um, bus walls and the walls that you see here. Uh, but these sockets with the electrical going into them was deeper than two inches. So we needed an extra half inch. So we actually designed these little cases, I guess, uh, to hold that and give us that space. Um, plus they look cool, it's just a neat style. Um, like I said, we have everything in the house is uh, 12 volt. We don't have any AC. We do have portable inverters that we plug into the 12 volt sockets. And those are 300 watt little portable inverters for things like coffee grinder, if you wanna charge your iPad or what have you. And that has been working great for us. Uh, we have everything running on DC, including our fridge. So it's working really well. watch some of our install videos. I don't remember what day it was, day 30, day 40, I don't know, they all kind of mesh together. Uh, you'll see that we actually took out the bifold doors that were the original bus doors. It had the mechanism here, which while it was fun to use, was actually a waste of space and we wanted to put in the passenger seat uh, so that Robert and I could travel together up front 
and not have him or I sitting awkwardly in the back trying to have conversations. We really wanted to have a passenger seat. We also wanted a passenger seat that revolved around so that we can use it functionally as a space to sit. Um, and it's actually proven to be a great spot. You have your coffee in the morning and sit on the window ledge here and look out the windows. Uh, the screen door is wonderful, especially for the cats. Helps kick them in most of the time. We had an incident last week where the kitty escaped in the woods at one in the morning. So that was frustrating. We did find her, thankfully. Uh, but we wanted to sort of make the, the entrance also sort of look homey um, and less like an RV. Uh, we got this really cool vintage, I don't know, canister, which we're using for umbrellas and whatever. Uh, we got a great hat and coat rack there from friends of ours. It's gorgeous. Um, and yeah, just, you know, Passing it up, some curtains, uh, and it just looks really great in here. And then with the curtains drawn, it gives us the privacy we want. Um, lots of people have also asked about this chair. This is a swivel chair that we got on Craigslist from an old Van Egen, Van Wagen, Van Egen, or something. Um, and it works great. You just rotate it around, and it clips into place. Oops, there you go. It's clipped in, uh, and there you go. You have a passenger seat for driving. It's awesome. You know, when you're parked. There you go. So that's kind of the front entrance area. So as you can see, we have a door here, which means there's two rooms to the bus. Uh, we have 16 feet of space from behind the driver's seat to the back of the bus. And we really thought it was important to have two separate spaces. Um, we've insulated these walls as well, so that definitely helps for sound. Um, and we got this cute little door on Craigslist as well. Uh, it's like a little hobbit door that just kind of fit perfectly. Uh, we put a latch here for traveling so that it doesn't swing open. Uh, so we latch the door. Um, anyways, this is what it looks like on the inside. Hello, welcome to the back of the bus. Uh, this is the bedroom. Um, we have two wheel wells on each side. Uh, so we needed to, of course, raise everything. This platform here is the bed. It has an awesome Casper mattress, super comfortable. It's also what we call our trunk and we keep the cat litter and everything in there and the cats have access down here. Uh, but this lifts up on hydraulic lifts uh, so that you don't struggle. This is like, I guess our little bathroom vanity area. Again, everything was custom here. We built all these little cabinets. Uh, this is our hot water on demand system. Um, these cabinets were made from the old piano. Uh, piano is a little bit of a theme in our bus here, just kind of for fun, a little bit of quirkiness. Uh, we're both musical and we actually met as a couple in the choir scene, so it just seems apropos to um, infuse a little bit of music into our bus. Uh, but yeah, it's just a cute little, cute little vanity. We got our running water here. You can brush your teeth or wash your hands after you use the washroom. Um, and it's also where we have our shower. That's right, there's a shower. So obviously, you know, there's a headroom is an issue. And if you want to shower, this is going to be impossible. Uh, so what we did was utilize the space between the wheel wells as a step down uh, in floor shower that we've hidden with this hatch here. So you just grab the latch, pull it up. Um, there's a bath mat in here. So you pull that out and set it where you want. And then I can step down into the shower and now I have full headroom to have a shower. Uh, how do I do that you say? There's a bed here, there's wallpaper and window frames. Well essentially what we've done is there is a shower hook system that you just clip this in here like that you pull out the shower head it hangs right here this is a shower curtain um, it's actually two shower curtains that I sewed together and there's clips here and you clip it all the way around you and it funnels all the water into the shower pan here um, and water doesn't go anywhere except for into the drain So we have this hot water on demand heater. This thing is meant for outside um, because it does create carbon monoxide. Um, but what we've done is created an inline ducting system that actually sucks out the carbon monoxide and shoots it out the side of the bus. We use an inline marine 12 volt fan. It's on this switch here. It's very powerful. It sucks everything out. Uh, we did some tests uh, with our meter. We have a CO meter here and your smoke alarm here. Uh, very important to have these in your bus. You never know uh, when fumes might be coming out and nobody wants to have a disaster or die or get sick. Uh, so make sure you have these in your bus. Uh, but we did tests with the carbon monoxide um, and this and this vent just sucks everything out. So we haven't had any issues with it. 
Um, but that's essentially how our shower works. I might get into a more detailed video of it, um, but the hot water on demand heater runs on propane. Uh, when you, you switch it on, when you want hot water, uh, there's a switch on the actual shower head here. Uh, so when you're in the shower and closed inside the curtain here, you just flip it on and off. Um, and you know, you do a military style showers, just get wet, soak, lather up, and then rinse off. Uh, we only have a 37 gallon tank in the bus. Uh, so, you know, you have to be aware of how much water you're using. One of the other cool things that we can do is take this completely outside of the windows here. Um, you can open this emergency exit or, or fish it out the window here. I do want to have a hanging system. For now, we've just been holding it uh, and that works. But if you want to have an outside shower, that is also kind of cool too. So that's essentially how our shower works. So obviously the other thing that we wanted to have in here was a toilet. Uh, it's just a small little toilet room. It's not fancy. Uh, but we had a little bit of fun with it. Um, when we originally bought the wallpaper for the bus, we ran out. And so we didn't have enough to do the bathroom. So we kind of decided, uh, at this point, the bus's name was Edgar. And we had been thinking about um, the Raven and sort of the macabre and that sort of style. And uh, it seemed apropos to put Edgar Allan Poe in the bathroom as well. Uh, so what we did was dip each page of an Edgar Allan Poe book. Sorry for ripping it up, Edgar, uh, but it looks amazing. Uh, we dipped them each in coffee and did a decoupage on the walls and super happy with the result. It turned out really great. Um, the system we have here is actually a composting toilet. Uh, I don't know how much you'll be able to see over my shoulders, but uh, it's, it's sort of a bucket system with a urine diverter. Uh, we built it ourselves. The urine diverter is actually a funnel that we cut. Um, I cut these little notches in it so that I could get the right angle. Uh, and that separates the liquids from the solids. We also have the bucket lower into the floor rather than up higher. It gives, it gives you a little bit more working room. So in order to accommodate that, I have another bucket that I cut and you can kind of see that as the backing. And that actually sits down inside that bucket. Um, and it works really well. Uh, obviously we don't have anything in there right now. But, uh, in between doing your business and whatnot, you put peat moss in there. Um, you put a little bit of bleach in your urine bottle um, and we also have a fan So there's a little tiny computer fan that works on that switch and it just creates a constant flow of air Going through the inside of this compartment um, And it doesn't smell at all RV toilets smell way worse than this system. Uh, I'll do a more detailed video of how we built all this But that's just a quick quick sort of quick and dirty version. Uh, we also want a privacy in here So we built a quick little window you can open that and get some fresh air in here if you want but just a cute little privacy window uh, but overall this is our our loo and it works great uh, so this is the other part of the bedroom which is the bed obviously super important uh, it's very comfortable um, we only have a double mattress in here wanted a clean but it would have been a little bit tight with the bed lifting up um, we have it again like i said so that the bed lifts up just lift that it's on gas lift so it stays up um, and this is our trunk. There's actually quite a bit of space in there. And this is designated for the cat litter. There's actually a little kitty door that they go through and the cat litter goes in there when we're traveling. Uh, it works pretty good so far. Uh, just working a little bit on keeping the litter more inside. So that's one of our challenges. But otherwise it's really spacious and we can store quite a bit of gear in there. Again, I still have to put a little handle there. There's a lot of little things that we want to do, but uh, we also wanted to get on the road. Uh, so this is the bedroom. Uh, again, we use the piano and music theme in here a little bit. Um, if you look on the floor here, just kind of a quirky detail, we put the piano keys there, or the piano pedals, I should say, uh, just for fun. The other thing that we did is we put this little um, piano shelf in here. Uh, these are, you know, the, the part that covers the keys. And it was so gorgeous, we didn't want to waste it uh, and thought it might be a neat little accent to have in here is a decorative kind of quirky thing for the bus uh, the other thing that we did was this is actually the front of the piano where you would put your sheet music and we use that as our headboard uh, it's just gorgeous has some wood detail on it and we really like the look of it and didn't want to waste it this was an old upright panel that somebody was giving away for free so um, we also have these reading sconces that are adjustable for brightness you can see if i hold down that gets brighter um, they all work on their own switches. There's a light here. It has its own switch off that, and I have a switch on this side as well. Uh, we also have 12 volt plugs and our, um, USB plugs as well. 
so that's kind of the bedroom. We're still working on storage for the clothes a little bit. Uh, we're gonna actually build some sort of small cabinet here, uh, which is why we didn't frame in the window like we did for the rest. And we also wanted to keep this emergency exit and this emergency exit accessible in case of an emergency. We have a bit of storage up here too. So like I said, we're two bears in a bus. We're gonna post some of our adventures when we travel. Uh, there's not gonna be a lot of adventures left this year as we are in Canada, so the weather is changing, uh, sadly. But next year we have a lot of exploration to do. Um, and we're gonna spend a lot of time in this little gem that we made. Uh, super proud of the work that we did. We did really awesome on it. Um, it was a really big project and four months was a very tight timeline on it. Uh, we were working many, many hours, long days, quite consistently to get this done. Um, but it's our little jewel box and we're super happy with it. Uh, we will be posting videos on some of the more specific, specific technical things that we did. Uh, so stay tuned for those. Um, we'll be working on those over the next few weeks here. Uh, just how we did our composting toilet, how our solar system works, uh, what kind of fridge we bought, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we get a lot of those questions asked from the Sulee community and shuttle bus conversion community. Um, and so we want to do the best we can to help everybody out based on our own mistakes um, and our own successes as well. Uh, so thank you so much for following us so far and stay tuned for more information and more fun videos from Two Bears and a Bus. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye.